right, hello everybody and welcome back. Horizon Overwatch is back at it again. Very excited to bring you the NFN Community Invitational number two. We've got a tournament going on right now. We are going to be get to, getting started here at Horizon Overwatch. And in just a few rounds, we're going to be sending it over to our friends at Broadcast GG. So make sure that you're following those guys. You're up to date. Subscribe so you know when they're going live. My name is Argander, and with me, as always, is a very good friend of mine, Utech. How's it going, Argander? And super excited to be here. Super excited to see what's going to be happening in this tournament, especially since we are just running off a patch that is not even a week old. Now, looking at some of the changes that have happened in this patch, uh, definitely some key characters going on. Doomfist, is, which has been seeing a lot of play uh, here in in the high SR games, uh, taking a little bit of a damage fall off uh, after 15 meters, uh, not not too much. But the big big key DPS uh, change we want to look at is Farah. Now she's had a bit of a change to her kit, just a little bit. Well, not really too much of her kit, just changes in general. Concussion blast reduced from 12 seconds to nine seconds. A rocket launcher attack speed increase. Uh, damage and also the damage redistribution going from uh, taking away from the explosion and going more towards the impact. Yeah, and really what it comes down to is. Farah shoots faster, and she can use her concussive mind more, or her concussive blast more, which really, really rewards rewards aggressive style Farah. I don't know if people have had a chance to switch to that. I don't know if people have had a chance to really deal with it that much, learn how to deal with that aggressive flanking Farah who you usually wouldn't see, because um, typically they like to play high in the skybox. So it's very difficult to shoot them. But I, I'm curious to see if the teams are going to be pulling that out and what both teams are going to do to hopefully try to counteract it. Um, but let's meet our teams. So far, we've got our first two teams going on right now. It's going to be Discount Avengers. And Utech, tell us a little bit about Discount Avengers roster. Discount Avengers has got a superb lineup. We first off have the main tank and Mist, who is going to be showing off his skills playing both the Winston, Ryan, and even a little bit of Hammond. Maybe try to pull that out. And on top of that, we have the off-tank, Samaritan, the team captain, who's going to try to see if he can definitely help out Mist in the coming frontline battles, as we're going to see. Uh, moving over on to the DPS roles, we're going to be seeing uh, Sezko uh, probably playing uh, more on to the, the hit scan DPS that we know and love, and love to see pop off. And on moving on over to Ino Rashi, who will most likely be playing all that projectile DPS, trying to get those play of the games, pressing that Q button, making the big plays. And of course, we're going to have people supporting the entire lineup. We have Yugi who and Ruby, who will be doing a fantastic job keeping them alive and hopefully making sure that they survive themselves. Yeah, and, and they're going to be having a tough way to go right now because it is your boys from Horizon homegrown team. Horizon Zenith is going to be going up against them. I know everybody's rooting for them. If you don't know who they are, make sure you join our Discord. Uh, the, these guys are fantastic. Let's just go over a few of the people you're going to see. It's going to be Cedro, typically likes to play tank. Bach is going to be on that tank as well. The one-two combo can be very, very strong coming out of Horizon Zenith. Uh, looking over to the DPS, it is Metaphor and Kashi that are going to be there today. And rounding it out with a support cast is Jay Bright and Arrow. So I'm really excited to see what both these teams do. Obviously, they're not going to be stuck into that 2-2-2 format the entire time. They do have a lot of flexibility. Um, so I'm very curious to see what they do. But for now, we are going to be jumping into our first map of the day. And it looks like it's going to be King's Row. Yeah, and a fan favorite, I have to say, especially with King's Row, just so much versatility and what teams can bring to both attack and defense. Of course, you have the control point initially, but with those hybrid maps, you switch on over to pushing a payload, and that can definitely uh, bring up some different play styles for each team. Yeah, I, I just really like to see the strong tanks coming out Throwing out the Rhine Zarya, we, we, we've seen it so much, but it's because we know it works. It's very, very strong, especially in this first portion. A lot of teams on defense do like to switch it up in the streets phase. But I mean, opening up, it's just so strong because if you get that that little bit of just a little bit of extra damage onto the other team, if your tanks can build their ults that much faster, you typically just full hold on point A. 
Exactly. And especially with that Ryan Zarya combo, since you are getting quite uh, quite effective choke points, she can just gather so much energy so fast. And as you said, the key of the game is to build up that ultimate as fast as you can and then go in from there. All right, well, let's take a look at the defense right now. It is going to be Ryan Zarya, exactly as I predicted, but everybody knows it's good. You've got Ana and, of course, Brigitte with the Lucio. I think everybody knows what we're looking at. We've seen this many times before. Did you really expect anything less on point A? Not too much, especially since they know what is the safe pick going with that 3-3 comp on the defense for the Discount Avengers. Uh, it's... You don't want to don't want to really uh, ruin what is already working in the current meta. Three, two, one. We will be going on into another fight, seeing who will win Discount Avengers or Horizon Zenith. Uh, we are also seeing kind of a little bit of a mirror match here. Yeah, it is going to be the mirror match. Keep your eye on those tanks, and it looks like they're wasting no time at all as Horizon Zenith. They do have control of the point here, but remember, this is going to be a very long fight, so it's going to be these incremental advantages that get you the win. And it looks like, again, tank play is so strong here. Tanks are going to take out those first kills. I mean, really, it comes down to the comp itself, but now we can see cleanup duty for Horizon Zenith. Uh, they're going to be getting point A very easily. Yeah, and let's also give a shout out to J Bright on that Ana. Those nades can be devastating as they try to get some guaranteed damage that cannot be healed up. Hope, and especially since you have a very, very heavy front line, uh, taking out the enemy healing can be devastating. Yeah, and we're going to be seeing the cycle. If you look at Horizon Zenith right now, Cedro has 88% to the ultimate. Metaphor is already at 70%. Compare that over to what Discount Avengers are bringing in. They just do not have any ultimates that are going to be coming up available. The fight takes off right away, though. Here comes Cedro. Gets his shatter almost completely blocked, but the damage is there. Everybody's following it up. And one more time, you can see the strength of this incremental uh, success over time. Horizon Zenith comes in with the ultimate advantage. They really only needed one there to win the fight, and there was nothing that the Discount Avengers could do to stop them. And even though they did use that Shatter out of Cedro, they did not even have to worry about everything because they were able to pump out enough damage to take out Mist so fast. And look at that. They already have some ult economy going into this next fight as they're going to be poking a little bit ahead of trying to see if they can get anything greedy. Yeah, Discount Avengers here do have five ultimates to work with, and they're going to be opening up right away. Graviton being used on both sides. It's just as who can get the damage in faster. Inarashi is going to be coming out with the first kill. Bombs are being thrown, and still most of the team is alive. And only j Bright being the one taken out of, out of that whole ult slug fest, but that is a key big player in what you need in for the upcoming fight. It is a huge disadvantage coming out for Horizon Zenith. This fight, this same exact fight has still been taking place and it looks like finally it's gonna be cleanly won on the side of the Discount Avengers. So this is the first time we've seen them be able to stop, you know, this incredible offense that's been pulled out by Horizon Zenith. It's now that they don't have their feet underneath of them, can Horizon Zenith retake this point? Yeah, and also box six being staggered out from what was going on and I'm going to be having a little bit of a pause there, uh, but definitely going to be giving a little bit of extra time for the side of Horizon Zenith, or for Horizon Zenith. All right, so it looks like we do have a pause here. Uh, they are trying to figure out, make sure that the lobby has been set up correctly. Now, one of the things that it should be uh, noted, you know, Torbjorn, the new version of Torbjorn is in the game. The rework is in the game. Um, but he's not available in competitive, and they're going to be using that same rule set for this entire tournament. So Torbjorn will not be allowed at all since the only playable version of him is the rework version. And again, that is not currently available in competitive. Exactly. And especially with how things will be changed up in the competitive scene and what he has done. It's only been a week, so we will see if uh, we're going to be getting a gentleman's agreement out of the two teams so we don't have to fully restart. But I think we are going to just 
going to be seeing a continuance of play and hopefully uh, just getting some good, good clean overwatch, seeing the 3-3 three, three comps coming out of both teams. Yeah, so it looks like everybody's going to agree Tor was not actually disabled by the game moderator, but uh, no, everybody's agreed just not to pick Torb, and it's not really like you would pick Torb, especially in this situation. There'd be no reason for it. Look at these teams. They just keep walking into each other, and it's a giant slam, but is there any follow-up? Again, 10,000 HP, it feels like, is out there. Nobody is dying yet, and finally it's going to be the discount Avengers getting the better of that fight on the back of Samaritan's Grab. Yeah, Samaritan getting that six-person grab, everyone just able to be melted. And, a spot, and of course, you do have Yugi having that uh, extra insurance policy with the beat being dropped to keep everyone alive and healthy. Uh, they still have two support ults to still run with, with also the Diva ult coming online, and Mist should have his shatter coming in soon, as Ryan is able to get that shatter so fast in these team lineups. And the fight is going to be happening right away. The Graviton Surge is going to be coming out. Another fantastic block by Miz there. He is going to pay for it with his life. And finally, all the kills coming in for the side of Discount Avengers. And I'm sorry, for the side of Horizon Zenith now with their feet underneath of them. What you're seeing here is it's so difficult to run into that entrenched triple-triple uh, defense that the Discount Avengers were bringing out. That was a very tough fight. Remember, you know, Horizon Zenith lost two fights in a row there. They lost a lot of time, but finally able to break through. And it's amazing how quickly these fights are able to go. That is the magic of King's Row. It is Streets Phase Point 2 is much like a gang of tug of war. Whoever is able to get that initial upper hand is able to continue on with the fight. The hammer does come down, but nobody's able to follow up. Fantastic Diva Bomb there just trying to clear some space. Again, this is what we're seeing with every single one of these fights. These small increments are coming in, and this time, once again, it's for Horizon Zenith. They just have too much HP. Yeah, and fantastic play coming out of both, although Horizon Zenith looks like they have the adva the clear advantage coming out, but having to waste uh, Arrow, having to use his his beat just to keep everybody alive as Box 6 was asleep. Luckily, they did not get too much damage taken on and they were able to continue with the fight and still push yeah and cedro has another earth shatter here we're going to be seeing if miss can get into a position to block it again he's feeling very confident after the last one but can he follow up a second time diva bomb is going to come in and completely close off that question doesn't matter anymore three are dead by says co how about that and a fantastic bomb coming in trying to distract the reinhardt mitt Missed getting full easy swings coming on in as, as Cedro had to definitely take take his shield up just to try to block, but wasn't able to help his entire team. The hammer down does come through from the side of Cedro. Nobody's available to get in there, so there's not a ton of value to be gotten there. Another drawn out fight here, but the nano might make this a little bit shorter. It's a boost, you know. Watch out, ladies and gentlemen. Can't always get it, but another slam coming on in and try to get this fight to keep going. But a huge nade coming on the side of Horizon Zenith. But it looks like the kills finally are going to be going in the way of the Discount Avengers. So once again, they're able to hold these behemoths back. It feels like every time Horizon Zenith is able to get into position, they're able to do the right thing. They've got the HP, but they're just losing these these small battles, and it's tougher and tougher to walk in every time. Trying to make it in now, and they're walking straight into a Graviton Surge, and it's going to be another team wipe on the side of the Discount Avengers. So again, this dominant team on the side of Horizon Zenith has been pushed back, I think, four or five team fights at this point. Yeah, definitely trying to get to this third point is a struggle and a slog coming in for the attacking side. Uh, but we want to definitely look at Metaphor. Now, he does have his grab, going to be looking in for a big combo. That is going to be the key person to be looking for to see if that they can actually continue and go off on that. Look at this with the bomb hammer combo. Does get one. Taking out Jaybright might be all you needed to end this fight, but they're going to be taking it, Horizon Zenith, using the bomb, getting a kill of their own. It's going to be missed out of the fight next. 
Yeah, and three people still able to push. They have 40 seconds, although with this, the attacking side does have a little bit of a spawn advantage since they are closer to their point when it comes to where the cart is currently. And uh, tragedy strikes Metaphor getting booped off that small area. That's a huge deal. He had Graviton Surge. It's not going to be available. This might be final fight. And a great grab going to be taking everybody in. Cedro just staying on the cart. Still has that nano boost, but he's going to be left alone as Horizon Zenith is going to have to lick their wounds with the 10 seconds they have left. It looks like they may be able to get into a position for Bach to touch, but it's going to be tough. Finally, yes, does make it out onto the payload, so overtime will proc here, and it's going to be everything thrown into the side of the cart. All the fight is happening there. The Graviton Surge is not going to get any value, though. Finally coming with a couple of kills, and it's going to be missed. And Ruby, but wait, don't count Horizon out too fast. They're right back in this fight. And they are actually pushing back. Discount Avengers, although it is still stay keeping the point in the town, but a great shatter coming out of Cedro. And how about Yugi with another boot kill, trying to keep the dream alive for his team, but it is going to be a retreat here. Discount Avengers, I mean, they're not in panic mode yet. They have plenty of part time to get one more strong fight on the point, and it looks like they're going to wait. Yeah, and it was going to be a one fight to rule them all as they tried to contest the point as soon as came with Mist coming in for that fight. Almost lost it in overtime there, but they are able to get back as Horizon Zenith onto the point. Kills are going in the way, and once again, Yugi with the boot kill. I think that's his third one in this past minute. Yugi is just creating so many opportunities for his team. And, and how Avengers. about that? It is going to be the Discount Avengers. They do get the hold, but that is pretty near the end. I mean, that's essentially the entire map. Not getting that final point is a little bit tough, but... I don't know, you tech. how do you think uh, Discount Avengers are going to respond with the attack on their own? Are they going to just go back with the same thing? Well, knowing that they can be effective with the 3-3 lineup, just like Horizon Zenith was, I feel as though they are going to try to use a similar comp. We'll probably see seeing the mirror match, point one. And as as it was before, it's it's going to definitely be that Titan tug of war as we continue on to see who can build up their ults faster, who can get into that fight and just eke out a little bit more just with pure strength. And, you know, we saw a little bit of a somber pick over there. Ruby is thinking about it, probably likely to switch. I mean, maybe not though, because somber has been becoming incredibly strong, you know, essentially as a somber you're just hacking the enemy team's main tanks or going for those easy picks in the back so we might be seeing that happen here if ruby decides to stay yeah if they do stay with this team cop definitely going to be playing to the alt fight uh doomfist can build up that ultimate so fast if he's able to get at least a one pick so mate forcing forcing horizon zenith to play a little bit closer together just so that they cannot get picked out by that Doomfist. But not only that, with the Sombra, going to be building up that EMP, and they, oh, maybe not, spoke too soon, going to be switching over back to the Ana, and going to be playing that 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, just because something could be doesn't mean it would be, and it looks like it's not going to be that way with the Discount Avengers. They're going with the Classic. They know where they want to be, and it's going to be straight on to point, opening up the fight exactly as you would expect. But how about that big brain trap taking out Ruby? Yeah, Nobody expected that to be there. And look at this. Cashier is still trying to come in and make a little bit of work happen for his team. It might be working out because now Arrow's in the action as well. And Metaphor being on the top, trying to get at least a snipe, but being taken out by Sezko. Doing a great job on that diva, just crowding out the space of Metaphor. There might be time for one last touch in it. I think maybe Horizon is thinking about it. They may be going for it right here and finally back onto the point with almost no percentage left, but it is going to be pushed out by the side of the discount Avengers. All is left but the crying at this point. Fight has been lost, but it looked like for a minute there, Utech, that there was going to be some life in that, that, that defense. Yeah, that fight I thought was definitely going into the side of Horizon Center at least eke out a few more seconds if not at least uh, a minute maybe just to prolong the fight well maybe that is being a little bit generous but I have to talk about that amazing nade out of Ruby just taking out the entire healing of Horizon and allowing them to win the fight and just clean up everything from there looks like a little bit of trouble with the D.Va in the top 
popping that bomb just to stay alive, trying to make something work here, throwing the Graviton Surge out, and it's gonna be the kills coming easily in the way of that nano-boosted Reinhardt. You don't wanna see Mist running at you, and unfortunately, that's exactly what Zenith just saw. So it's gonna be a one fight here, and there may be time to touch here. I'm not sure, but it looks like they're gonna be getting the second point for free. Yeah, that'll be going into the upper six, or the six minute mark for when they cap. But a tie are going to be coming in to see if they can get a single pick just just to see maybe they can just stop the push. And that tire really wanted to be popped on the last fight. Kasha was trying to get into a good position, but Sezko just sniffed them out of the brewery and completely broke their plans up. And now we're leading into this with another steamrolling type attack using the beat. It's going to be Discount Avengers in a very advantageous position. Zenith knows that they've completely dropped out of this fight. Yeah, and showing all the strength they have five and a half minutes to continue on this push. And the front line, Samaritan, showing why Zarya could be so powerful when she has that much charge as it's going to be one final fight. If they can uh, get this, they will get the win. Cashier is trying to build that that tire. It is going to be the Junkrat tire coming out right now, but there's so much HP on the side of the Discount Avengers. I don't know if the tire could do anything. Looks like it does take out a single Brigitte. It's not going to be enough, and that is Discount Avengers confidently coming through on uh, the first map here with the victory. Uh, and let's take a look at the play of the game. I always love seeing these. If I got to guess, I really have to give it to one of the tanks. It's got to be the Sesco bomb. Definitely. Going to be seeing a little bit of cheeky play and eyes in the skies on this bomb. Yeah, great positioning that it had line of sight of the doorway, knowing that's where everybody would go to hide. Really, really smart play by Sesco. And showing the power of the 3-3 comp. Uh, gotta give credit to Horizon Zenith for trying to play with the Widow, with the Junkrat, trying to maybe go against go against the giant uh, turtle-like behemoth of the 3-3. But sometimes you just have to fight uh, uh, raw strength with raw strength. And they were seeing a bit more success with uh, going into the mirror match. Well, that's one of the things that's really good about the triple-triple setup. And honestly, when it's on a payload map, it can really work out with any team comp. Once you get that snowball rolling, if you can manage your, your ultimates, if you can rotate them through, especially your tank ultimates, um, it's just so easy. It feels like the game is on easy mode. And it's not because, you know, Zenith is bad. We saw how confident they were on the attack. But really, it just comes down to having that advantage over somebody who's about equal skill as you that little bit of advantage when it comes to the ultimate economy, it just makes those games feel like they're so much easier. Yeah, and let's not forget just the power of Anna right now, you know, with all those buffs that she has progressively received. Let's let's not discount just a well-placed Anna nade can just devastate an entire te team fight for one of the teams and just save your entire front line. And especially since you have the front line of the Zarya and the Rhine, if you can just kill that big barrier, just get that Rhine down, all the rest of the dominoes are going to follow. Absolutely, Utech. And then also keep in mind for everybody watching at home, uh, this tournament is where, you know, this is the first round. We're opening up with the best of three. So given that the Discount Avengers did win the last map on King's Row, with the win here on Lijang Towers, it's going to be Discount Avengers moving into the next bracket. Uh, Zenith will still be around Horizon's, Horizon Zenith. They're going to be dropping into the loser's bracket. They get another life, but you really want to get this early win. And it's going to be interesting to see where the brackets will take us. But let's not discount that this map in Lijang Tower is also super fun to play. Uh, are we going to be seeing an additional 3-3 uh, three, three comp out of these, just like we saw in King's Row? Well, if something worked most of the time, usually when you were on attack the first time, it'll probably pretty much work exactly the same the second time. Now, I'm not saying it's it, it's wrong to run this. I mean, if you know your enemy team is going to be running a goatee type comp, you really just want to mirror match them, try to get that incremental advantage. So I get it. Um, 
but it's kind of interesting to see that we're not seeing either team try to do anything a little bit different. Given that it's Li Zhang here, I mean, Fair is also a very good approach, but <laughs> these teams know a lot better than I do because they're going straight triple triple to point, and here comes the fight. And an advantage already coming on Horizon Zenith taking out the Inorashi as they continue on with this big fight already onto the first point. Yeah, miss getting that charge is huge onto Arrow, but you know, when you see those first few kills go for the way of Horizon Zenith, it looks like everything's gonna be following it up. And that's exactly what we're seeing once again. So it is gonna be Zenith getting control of the point here. Uh, we saw how great they looked when they were in control, but we did see a few times that the Discount Avengers was able to unhorse them from their position. So this is really just up to, you know, Discount Avengers taking the fight the right way. Yeah, and definitely playing the game of space and space creation from these tanks. You are playing th triple tank, and it's definitely the Ryan match matches as Cedro is and going to And another already... huge block that comes in from this. That might be his fourth one today. Here we go with the hammer down. Does get two. It's going to be missed going in with the nano boost. Can they get any kills off of it? Cedro is the first one to get a kill. Not looking very good for the discount Avengers. They invested a lot into this fight. And this is already getting so much ult out of all those all, all charge out of all those swings but it doesn't matter because horizon zenith is still able to follow up with anything that discount adventures is trying to dish out right now yeah fat graviton surge came out for metaphor it was absolutely perfect to use it there they probably would have won but that was just the exclamation point we're winning this now but take a look, Bach already has his Diva Bomb available. Arrow's coming up with one. Jay Bright is coming up, and Cedro with almost another one available here. So they have so many ultimates. Diva Bomb is going to be coming in, trying to get a kill. It's going to be Inorashi in for the first kill, but then paying for it with his life from the Diva Bomb on Bach. Very well done there. Teams were even for a moment, but it looks like... Uh, once again, Metaphor getting that little bit of extra damage for his team. It might be enough for Horizon Zenith, but then the beat comes in. Who knows what's going to happen here? Yugi with a perfectly timed beat gets the boom kill as well. How about Yugi for MVP? Yeah, both Ryans are down. Those big damage being taken out of both both sides. But uh, Sesko, uh, with that fully charged Zarya, going to see if he can get anything done. But he is a one-man army against being outnumbered. What an amazing Graviton by Metaphor. Looked great in the last one. Followed it up with a huge Graviton here at the end and getting almost all the kill credit is Metaphor as well. So once again, we see how these team comp works out. If you have those tank ultimate rotations, which man did Zenith look good with, then you really have the match. So that was a, a statement, I think, on the side of Zenith. Yeah, and Zenith especially with that first attack the, for the first point of control, uh, had the space that they needed. They were playing Discount Avengers into that choke where they were playing on very thin ice with a, a wall or a, a well to oblivion right behind them. So they had to try to push forward, but they just were not given any space. Uh, credit to where credit is given to Cedro, who was definitely holding that front line. Yeah, I'm just impressed watching Mist. I think I, I've actually lost count of how many shatters he's blocked, but clearly Mist has a very, very good concept on these Reinhardt uh, head uh, mind games that they can play with each other. Mist is looking really, really sharp, but <laughs> Seedra has been getting like six shatters of fight, so I don't know how much it actually works. And already a big pickoff. Mist is taking out Kashir. Yeah, and honestly, I know nobody's surprised to see this. Two kills go in the way of one of the teams. The other team smartly backs off. It's going to be first fight one this time, though, on the side of Discount Avengers. And remember, this, if the, you know, if they make it to another map, which is exactly what Discount Avengers doesn't want to happen, uh, it's going to be really easy for Zenith to get back into this. So Discount Avengers really wants to hang on to this point and just shut it out right here. Yeah. And look at that, not even running the Ana, not seeing the mirror match, uh, switching over to the Zenyatta over on the side of Discount Avengers. Uh, Inarashi is going to be taken out of that fight, but once again, we saw two picks going in the way for the Discount Avengers, and they're just so smart with the way they play this. They see that advantage, they walk in, uh, tanks hold LMB, and, you know, easy fight won. So, and Inarashi is going to be coming in with that support ult. We've also got Ruby, so this could be a moment for Metaphor to go big, but remember, that Transcendence is available if needed. 
And it looks like that is going to be happening right here. Counter Graviton Surge and a block shatter. Cedro once again getting his shatter blocked from Mist. Mist is just so amazing watching him block these shatters. Such a smart player. He's always there when he needs to be. He's providing that damage. And man, that's maybe his fifth block shatter today. And that's got to be very demoralizing for Cedro, but he can't stop yet as he's going to continue pushing in front for his team. Cedro's already in there. The damage is trying to follow up behind him, but it's not going to be enough. I mean, with Brigitte providing all of that armor for the team, yes, it was nerfed from 150 armor down to 100, but in the middle of a fight, it's just essentially a constant heal. It's so difficult to walk into that. So that's pretty much a fight lost before it started. 85% and it's going to be another fight being taken straight into the side of Horizon Zenith. They are going to try to use the counter bomb. It is going to get a kill. Is that going to be enough though? With 93% left on the clock, we're going to see if someone can at least touch the point. <laughs> Trying to make a decision. They are going to be able to touch here. Graviton, I'm sorry, Transcendence is going to be coming out, and Narashi is taken out of the fight, and wow, we what looked like it was going to be a 100 to 0, flipped on a switch just by Cedro being able to get back to the point. What a fight, what a crazy match. Yeah, didn't even think that that was going to even happen, but with that initial pickoff by Box 6 taking out the Zarya, that is huge, huge for Horizon Zenith to try to stay in this fight. Double Graviton Surge, Transcendence comes out, but it's not going to be enough. This is a fight completely won on the side of Discount Avengers. All they need to do is cap the point. There's going to be nobody left to touch, so it looks like that's going to be it. 35% is all Zenith was able to take from this map, so it is going to be one more map at Li Zhang to decide the winner. And it's going to be an interesting strategy that they will need to pull out because this next map that we're going to be going into is a huge Pharah map. And are we going to be continuing to see the the strength of the 3-3 comp? Or are they going to utilize that aerial pressure that uh, that this portion of Li Zhang can allow for? I don't think anything will switch. I. You know what? I think if it's going to switch, it will be happening right up here because just like you said, this is a very strong map. There's a lot you can do with it, um, but let's take a look. <laughs> the changes might be coming in, doors opening now. And how about this? It's going to be Cedro going over uh, to the dive with Bach on the D.Va Winston. I think that's a great play here. Let's see what they can do with it though. Who are they going to even dive? It's going to be interesting. Probably try to see as to get as much cleave damage with that Tesla cannon and maybe just just uh, disrupt the entire team of Discount Avengers as they are going to be playing it a little safe as they're going to just tiptoe into this fight. Well, there's no reason for Discount Avengers to move forward. Let the enemy team come to you with those dive tanks, and this is exactly what they want to see. Discount Avengers is happy to stand behind this pillar because really it's up to Horizon to make a move. And going to... And already the Moira having that coalescence just to fight around and going to be crowding out everyone on Horizon Zenith as showing the power of that 3-3 three, three, that three, three lineup with the Rhine uh, overpowering. I think uh, everybody expected the coalescence there. I don't think anybody expected uh, Discount Avengers to come out that fast. Inarashi just diving into the enemy team, opening up a lot of space, and uh, that's a win for Discount Avengers. Now they're in a position where they can push this to, hey, this is the last map. If they win this point, they, you know, this best of three is over. So Zenith needs to get back in, forces to the third map, and they're gonna be trying to do it still on the back of these dive tanks. Yeah, and Kashir switching over to the Pharah with Metaphor on the Sombra. We're gonna be playing onto those hacks if they can get something with a bomb coming out but not able to connect. What a beat by Yugi. Perfect timing there, giving his team enough time, but the trance is going to be coming in on the other side. It's so many uh, so many ultimates being used, but finally the Graviton Surge is going to make this fight completely over. And this is looking a little bit rough here. I'm curious to see if there's going to be any, you know, more specific use of that Sombra. Wait for her to maybe, you know, hack the Lucio. A lot of times a hack Lucio can be easy to kill. Uh, but it's going to come down to that Sombra. Can she find a good target for her team? 
Yeah, and how fast can she get that EMP up? Because they are going to be playing around that victory condition of the team fight with the EMP, but with 75% already on the side of Discount Avengers, it's going to be very, very hard. Yeah, a full defense matrix was just used. That's why you heard the justice from above, but it was completely destroyed. Uh, not going to get a whole lot of value there. A few kills, though. It does look like they may be coming in for Horizon Zenith, but they are getting pushed back once again on the point here. Bob trying to make it happen. This is his second kill of the fight. Yeah, and Arrow being able to resurrect Kashir as they are getting a renewed sense of life. And just like we saw in the last map, uh, going... A 99% on the side of Discount Avengers with uh, percentage points coming on for Horizon Zenith, but they have to be able to hold up at least three fights before they can uh, hope for a victory. Cashier is looking for this booth, trying to get a free kill here, but really just raining a ton of damage on the enemy backline. So the entire time that Discount Avengers have been moving here, they've been taking spam damage from Cashier, not able to find any kills, not yet. Yeah, and that's, that's probably a fight-ending ultimate right there. Taking out Mist on the other team. Yeah, this is a completely over. Jumping off into the Abyss. Just really trying to group up here. And the EMP, although getting buying them another fight, uh, Yugi does have that beat to be dropped and not to be contested. So they're going to be having... They're going to have six ultimates on board for, for this next fight. And they're going to be looking all very comfortable coming in onto this next push. Well, first of six about to be used here. Cashier does try to get some value with the justice from above, but Sesco once again saving his whole defense matrix just to stop it, and it's going to pay off because now the rest of his team is hitting Q. This is a fight looking like it's going to be easily won for the Discount Avengers, and this might be the final match between these two. Unfortunately, Cedro getting taken down by the bomb, but going to be resurrected to try to contest as much as he can before as everyone on the side of Horizon Zenith is getting into the dogpile. Yeah, I mean, coming in with six ultimates, it was really hard for Discount Avengers to even lose that fight. I mean, there's always a chance. Uh, maybe Farrah gets a little bit of value from her, from her you know, rocket barrage. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen, so... <laughs> It just shows off how smart Discount Avengers is. They didn't even want to take that that first fight they did after they had lost the point. They just wanted to build ultimates. They knew they were all going to press Q, and you can see exactly what happens. And loving this play of the game, utilizing the power of Coalescence to both heal and harm, and just being able to take out so many just with a single a single character. And that, that can be just devastating to see that. I mean, really, any good Moira knows you're pretty much only supposed to be using it for harm. How about that, though, for Inorashi getting the 90%, what was that, kill participation? Great job. I mean, that's what a Brigitte should be doing, but that's that's even above and beyond what you should be doing. That's a fantastic job. Definitely, definitely, especially with everything that has been going on. Uh, Brig Brigitte has just done so much uh, just to allow for this 3-3 uh, three, three comp to come in, just providing that armor, just providing the, the crowd control just for that front line, uh, allowing even for the back line just to stay uh, safe and just have a presence for any any flankers that try to contest your back line. Yeah, I, people learn that if you hit W, you win the game. That's, that's really all these triple-triple comps are doing. You just hit W uh, until you're at the enemy team spawn. And then you kill them again once they respawn. Yeah, no, it's and you can't you can't uh, go against the logic of uh, what is it? Press W and M one, and as you said, you win. But even on top of that, it's just interesting to see just the mind games that come out of that at that point. Because as as we were seeing before, with the with all the blo uh, the shatters being blocked by mist. Uh, if you can get that that single pick or take out the Reinhardt, especially with these type of team comps, that that is the linchpin in every and everything. Yeah, and again, it, it kind of worked out. Miss got all of those blocks on the Earth Shatters from Cedro, but then again, on the other hand, Cedro got eight Earth Shatters per round, so some of them were were actually getting through, and you know, 
just watching these two great players go at it back and forth. It was really, really a treat to watch just to see which one came out on top. And a few times it certainly was Cedro, but man, miss blocking all of those shatters. That was just incredible. Yeah, and also just seeing the support play, uh, being able to keep the behemoths of the of the uh, three tanks alive the entire time, uh, especially a surprise to see just on uh, second second map of Li Zhang running with the triple support, they ran a Brigitte, a Zen, and a Lucio. So instead of for going that extra healing for just pure damage coming out with that Zen. Uh, and honestly, you said it all. What else is there to say? It was just Discount Avengers showed the way to run that comp. It was really, really just almost like a learning experience. Just watch what they did, see the decisions they made, and it's just fantastic. But uh, we do have our next match. It is going to be coming up in a few minutes. It looks like they're just finishing up with their best of three series. So we're going to cut it to a quick break in just a moment. Um, keep an eye out. We should be back in a few minutes here on Horizon Overwatch. But, you know, I can't wait to see what the rest of these teams do. But again, we're going to cut it to a quick break, and we'll be back in about three minutes.
right? That was a very long three minutes, but we are back in it. A little bit of a delay in our last round, but this is loser bracket round one. So a couple of teams, one of them you're going to be recognizing here. It is going to be Horizon Zenith once again, this time going against who? I am Argander, and with me once again is Utek. Hello, hello, and it is going to be an amazing round of maps we are going to be seeing uh dorado hanamura and busan or maybe oasis uh depending on what is agreed upon but uh coming in with the teams first we have who uh tank line coming in we have mac and fofe and on the dps we have valentine and de serino and for the support line we have sola and scope Yeah, and then taking a look over onto the other side, it is going to be Horizon Zenith. You caught them last game. They are here. Another life in loser's bracket. It's going to be Bach, Six, and Cedro once again at the top. Metaphor, Arrow, and then rounding it out is Cashier and Jay Bright. Those supports that you loved last time. Let's see how they go. It is going to be Elios, and it looks like we're getting started. Uh, should be uh, getting into the map soon. Uh, if I remember correctly, should be seeing some interesting plays uh, out of the Horizon Zenith. Did get a good chance to see them last uh, in their first round uh, going against Discount Avengers. And uh, even though they did get uh, taken down into loser brackets, showing a very, very strong gameplay on their end. Yeah, absolutely. And and who is the team that we haven't seen yet? So it's going to be a new look at Horizon Zenith to see how they respond in real time after that loss. Uh, so can they bounce back? But then, you know, we didn't get a chance to see who's game, but, you know, they're in loser's bracket for a reason, too. So th this is both of these teams really trying to duke it out, stay alive in the tournament. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of interesting stuff. Hopefully we'll be seeing some uh, new and interesting things. Yeah, and our first map here going to actually be Dorado uh, with uh, Horizon Zenith coming in on... They are going to have the first chance to attack with who coming in on that defense. Are we going to be seeing a more of the 3-3 uh, that we did get to see earlier on in uh, King's Row and Li Zhang? Uh, or are we going to be seeing a few different uh, strategies coming out here? Well, I mean, Horizon Zenith did not lose by very much. They did get squeezed out in their round. Uh, but again, it, w it was those small incremental advantages that at the time, Discount Avengers, uh, you know, kept taking off these fights. So Horizon Zenith, they're very, very strong with these triple, triples, uh, triple tank, triple support comps. They can do it very well. They just got edged out a little bit in the last round, but they've got another chance to show it off here. And out of Valentine, we're seeing a May come out. Uh, gonna be playing heavily towards that uh, the archway. That's an incredibly powerful choke on the side of the def on the defensive side. And uh, we are gonna see a restart as uh, there was a bit of a, a mistake as yeah, we, that it was looks like it was accidentally set to quick play rule set that is not what we're doing here that is going to be fixed up sorry about that everybody watching but scope's going to have that fixed up to the competitive rule set and then we can jump into it and although these two teams definitely have a very very good uh spirit of the game they want to be playing that competitive uh game mode and uh, not not have to worry about just playing one round. Well, we're back into it, and you know this is interesting. I want to see if either team keeps. I mean, the doors aren't open. They haven't even gotten a chance to walk outside yet. Plenty of things could change, but we did see an interesting pick on defense last time. I wonder if we're going to see it again this time. I gotta I gotta imagine we're still going to see it from the side of. I don't know though. The defense really. I like this May. Yeah, I'm I'm interested to see what they're going to be doing, especially since May is a little bit of a sleeper pick if you think about it with the just the amazing potential of crowd control uh getting that slow in and you know those icicles don't have any fall off range well, or the damage. On the other hand, it's actually going to be uh the attacking team Valentine beating me out from who, so uh there's no chance we're going to see a May. 
but maybe on defense it could have been interesting, but I, I got to imagine they're going to... I mean, are they? No, of course not. I think we're getting baited. Uh, I, You know what? I I really hope to see the Bastion. I just, I want to see the pirate ship. Just, just so, it's it's a guilty pleasure of mine. But an interesting setup for the defense. Dive is going above, but they are hidden below as uh, going to see if they can catch him off guard in this little room. Yeah, but now what? This is what I want to see. The wall is going to be coming down. Metaphor trying to get that hack in there. So it looks like they're just happy to stay in this little house and just keep walling it off. Maybe somebody will make a mistake. But they this are is... contesting the payload. This is interesting. Yeah, this is a very interesting strategy. They're able to hold on in that small room and with the May wall just keeping everybody inside allows the the Reinhardt shield just to recharge and they're going to be coming out of there just to try to see if they can get anyone else out of their help out of their it, little hidey hole it feels like nobody knew what to do there but the kills are going to be coming in so finally the fight has been taken out into the open onto the cart and it looks like that card is going to be staying put at least for the time being. So now you get a chance to think, what do we do? Like, how do we walk into this? Well, they're definitely going to have to be putting some spam damage in there. That may wall putting so much work. I, I don't know what to call this stretch. I've never seen this before. This is just amazing. And it looks like it is going to be coming out. And once again, getting the better. It's, you know, hiding behind that wall, waiting for the opportunity. And when they go in, they go in so strong. So the card hasn't moved getting the easy kills but it looks like that d mech is going to come through that's actually a pretty big deal <laughs> not not with the rest of the kills coming in the way so it's going to be another full hold defense here can they keep this up and the kill feed going in a favor of who going back into their green, but oh the justice turning it around getting two picks and that can be crucial this might be giving the edge that Horizon Zenith needs as they do have the respawn advantage on this attacking side. And again, I don't see this cart moving. I absolutely love what we're seeing here. Very, very smart play. It's kills still coming in from both sides, but very smart play. Look how much time was wasted off of the clock there. Essentially two and a half minutes were just lost for nothing on this attack. That not only that, they do are able to get Fofei out, but just so many kills coming out of the side of who? And not, not only that, but they still haven't been able to get past that archway, that which is normally a favored, uh, favored hotspot for the defense. Sprigita just won't die on the point, keeping everybody back. This has been very, very difficult. I mean, some of the kills are coming in, but it's just never been enough. The cart is still in the first phase here. One minute left. Finally, some kills coming in. Uh, and Metaphor going on to that Junkrat, I think, is really doing the work that they need. Just spawn, or spam damage into where they're trying to hold themselves up and just kind of smoke them out of where they're trying to set up shop. Yeah, this is exactly what Zenith needed. They have the space. They've got a little bit of room here, but the fight's coming in fast. It's going to be up to Metaphor using his tire here, just trying to zone out the enemy team. Can he get any value? He is going to get a 2K on both of the healers. Metaphor just waking up his offense. Yeah, but Sola taking out Cedro, that is one less person, but a great beat dropped on the side of Arrow. As they're going to continue on with almost 10 seconds left in this fight. This is the push that Zenith needed. They finally have some room on the point here. All of the kills are going their way. They were able to make it past that fantastic defense. And there's still a little bit of life left here, but it's not going to be long for Cashier out there with the blade getting the 2K. And we're going to see who can clean up Discer Discerno going on over to the Hammond. Just trying to make save up enough time second as bomb of the fight finding another great target there how about the stall coming out there Dossarino finally taken out of the fight it is going to be moving into the second phase here we might see the team comp switch up just a little bit because this is very high high ground dependent yeah gonna be seeing the jumps coming out of the winston and the diva as 
as you said, it is very, very vertically dependent on these fights. But seeing the Doomfist coming out of Desarino, uh, going to be some interesting to see if he can get some picks in the back line. Yeah, Mac a little bit overextended there, was able to be taken out by Box 6, the Diva, but Box 6 might be paying for it with the mech, and it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Metaphor just getting a 2k easily with two sniper shots downrange. What a play there. I mean, you know, looking so strong into the street space, they didn't really need those picks, but then when you have Metaphor coming in saying, now I have to swap onto Widow just to deal with your Widow, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, this is so incredible to watch the the offense, but it, they're just always in such a good place. And jumping on to the high grounds, both Widows going to be looking to see if they can pick each other off in that Widow v. Widow duel, as the rest of the team of both Who and Horizon Zenith are going to be trying to see if they can create just space for this Widow fight. Yeah, Metaphor again getting the better of that Widow 1v1, following it up with another kill. This could be Metaphor carrying the fight again, but finally taken out is Metaphor by Mac. So the kills are starting to come in for the side of Who. This looks like it is going to be completely one yes. A little bit of room for Genji Lab. Cashier did have his Dragon Blade, but you know, obviously not really wanting to use it there. Didn't have a chance of living. So they may be using it for something big, but they don't really have too much to go along with it. They do have Arrow's Beat coming out. They may try to combo those two things together. That will definitely be the win condition that they are going to be looking for, as long as that blade can connect on at least two or three people. That should be the momentum that will swing anything. Fair. Metaphor already getting a great pick off on the Valentine. First blade coming out is going to be the beat blade coming in by Cashier, but the beat comes in on the other side too. Nobody's able to die, and Mac finally getting the kill. Dos Arena going to be following up as well. So now all of the kills are coming in very strong for who? Metaphor still trying to make it work out there getting picks. And with just overtime hopping on in, unable to even get overtime as they weren't able to get enough picks that beat giving life into the back line of who and just allowing them to survive the Genji Blade. Great defense coming out of the side of Who. I was and just thinking that too. How about the defense holding the hut down there? I mean, I guess I always knew that you could contest payload from that spot, but I never really thought of to do it like that with the Maywall there. What a fantastic early defense hold. And especially with what the normal meta picks are in in this uh, in this current game map. Ha having to switch to that junk rat uh, is not not a normal thing, especially on uh, the first point of of Dorado. Yeah, let's take a look at this defense. Uh, we do see. I mean, the first thoughts are coming out. The first thoughts are coming out from the side of Horizon Zenith. So it does seem like they want to go with the Orisa. It's an interesting pick. I, I I think if they're gonna be holding around the Arisa, just waiting for the enemy team to walk in, you're not gonna have a problem with that with who. They're they're gonna be walking in, so this might work out well. Especially with the changes that have happened with Arisa getting that uh, twenty percent uh, reduction in her spread, she might actually be a very potent threat against Valentine's Pharah. Yeah, I'm curious to see how much that spread reduction does. Uh, it's still very tough to hit a pocketed Farah, And it does look like it's going to be Fofei on the Mercy to go with Valentine. So just really trying to get the boops there. And that's a gigantic boop that comes in, booping some of the Horizon Zenith staff off the side. But it's going to be Metaphor getting that first pick, so it might not have mattered. Yeah, and Valentine getting rezzed to get, keep the Barrage in the sky alive as they're able to get at least to the archway and gonna see if they're gonna drop down or just move back widow got completely focused down there what a fantastic job on the side of who i mean they really picked their target well and metaphor was taken out of the fight that's your main damage dealer this is gonna be a tough one yeah and especially with the changes that have happened to Farah, with the increased attack speed you're able to 1v1 a lot easier than you were before Yeah, and on the back of that Pharah, I mean, really just free to do whatever she wanted. At this point, the Widowmaker is back. It's not going to make much of a difference. And then Valentine getting the better of that exchange. But yeah, the moment Metaphor was taken out of that fight, there was just 
really nothing to stop who from walking in, uh, getting the space they need for their Pharah, and then, you know, we saw how it turned out. Yeah, and Cedro switching off the Arissa on over to the Winston, especially as we said before, this is a very vertically dependent map, or point in the map. And the streets phase, we're going to see, oh, Metaphor already getting a great shot onto Valentine. Yeah, Valentine was trying to get some spam, peaked just barely over the bridge there and uh, paid for it with his life. So Metaphor taking advantage, but then paying for it with his life, Dossarino getting the kill out there. So it looks like it's about even. Uh, and three ults being used on the side of who, just to make sure that they get this, get at least that much more push on the payload. And of course, they don't have to get it too far fo forward, and they have already four minutes and 30 seconds left on their side. Yeah, both bombs coming in, zoning at each other's team, not getting any kills, but it's going to be Dalsarino getting the first kill with the Swift Strike on the box before he could re-mech. Cedro, though, following it up. Metaphor once again back in this fight, getting the headshot as well onto the Baby D, but that's all she wrote. Uh, Metaphor being allowed in the game is not working out too well for who. Uh. And I love this switch over onto the Doomfist. Uh, you, you did also see who switch over to it on their defense, especially since you're starting out on the high ground. You're able to get those slam, the slam, uh, just getting so much HP with that extra shield off of Doomfist, just being able to be that much more effective as you jump into the attacking team. and just waiting to take the fight here, not committing anything, really just trying to keep their damage dealer alive, but the Primal's gonna come out just to take out the Widow. Is it gonna be enough? Finally taking out this metaphor with the Winston Primal Rage. And Widow for Widow, but the defending team of Horizon Zenith, they have to make sure they stay on the cart so that it doesn't get to that final destination and get them that loss. They wanna fight uh, as hard as they can as they're continuing on. Yeah, it's very close to final fight here, and Dulcerino's gonna try to make sure it ends right now, taking out the Genji Blade, getting the first kill, demacking the Diva, taking her out, and that's gonna be all she wrote. Look at this, following it up with another kill after the Blade. Dulcerino just making it work for his team, getting uh, through that defense that Metaphor was bringing with the Widow, but once she was taken out, an entire Primal Rage was used just to kill her, then you had the Genji come in and get all those kills. So really, really strong play coming out for the side of who very well played smart with the way they approached it. And the execution was obviously there. Yeah, and Citro here with the play of the game, showing the power of the Nana boost on a Winston, just all that cleave damage that can just rack up, allowing anybody else on his team to just get that last sliver and get those kills. And, you know, it's got to be said, well side on both uh, both teams. They're really, really strong fights on both sides. And it really just came down to a couple of key picks that happened in the last round there. But, you know, both of these teams, again, they're fighting for their life. They need to stay in this. A loss here, you know, who getting ahead with that first win? If they can box Zenith out and take another win here, Zenith is out of the tournament. So Zenith is in it to win it. They are going to be trying to get back into the next map. And knowing that Zenith does have that very powerful pick potential, Metaphor showing up and getting so many great picks to start fights, uh, especially on two CP, CP maps, uh, we are going to be going into Hanamura. It can be a, a very effective strategy in the, into uh, getting that attack as we will see them uh, assaulting the castle as uh, we go into Hanamura. Yeah, interesting map. You know, given what we just saw on defense, remember that Dorado A hold? I don't know. Maybe if there's a defense here, we might see something similar. Hold the noodle shop. But then again, I, I suppose the team can run by you, but maybe hold, you know, over on the side uh, right next to the gate. Uh, there's so many interesting things that you can start doing if you start applying, you know, some of these less run heroes like May. You start applying their kits into it, and then you can have a lot of fun with it. But you know, I'd love to see more of it, but it definitely seems like it was really good defense for a payload. Uh, I'm wondering if we are, if this is a troll pick or if we're going to actually see Cedro over on the Hammond. I have seen before that Hammond can do a very good job at disrupting that the main gate choke point and just kind of divide, divide the attention of the defending team. So who will have to, it's going to be a game of rock, paper, scissors to see 
maybe what strategy can work for them in the long run. Yeah, but we can take a look over to the defense, see that we have... I mean, we've got the Doomfist. I like the Doomfist. I think it's really, really smart here. There's a lot of great rollouts that Doomfist can do to get into the enemy team backline. Um, so it should work out well for them, just provided that Doomfist doesn't run into a lot of CC when he gets there. He doesn't know right now that they have a Brigitte. That is a little bit scary for him. And going for the uh, triple tank, triple support for, the, for Zenith, as they're going to already be going onto that front line. And Doomfist already just dealing, being so abusive into the back line. Yeah, he's going to have to pay for that kill onto the Lucio with his life, but maybe not. <laughs> he is finally taken out. Jaybright trying to keep this fight alive here. But yeah, Dossarino was able to get into the back line. He missed his initial target, settled for the Lucio, got the kill. And yeah, the enemy team, you know, turned around to kill him, but it seemed to be worth it because the rest of his team was able to clean up right after that. Yeah. But let's let's uh, talk about that Doomfist, though. Definitely uh, taking out the speed of that Lucio can be very crippling, especially to the triple tank lineups that we, we are seeing here. Yeah, and we got a counterpick Doomfist from Cashier, so definitely looking to set something up. Curious to see what he wants to dive into or what, what he's looking to do. Probably just play around the tanks, but the fight is going to be coming straight on to the point here. Tanks are trying to stay together, but... That nano boost just may have saved, did not get the heal onto the Reinhardt, but it's not going to matter because he comes in with a giant shatter, didn't need the heal, took the nano boost, got the kills, and it's going to be finally taken out. Cashier was the last uh, breath of life they had, but that attack was taken out the moment the nano boost came through onto the Reinhardt, enabled that shatter, and completely stopped the fight. And about two minutes left on this push for Zenith, but they do have, Metaphor does have that Graviton Surge. Gonna be looking to try to combo with something. Maybe they can get a few good swings out of Sidro into that grab. Yeah, the first grab is gonna come out on the side of Who, and it looks like they're getting dividends right away with the kills coming out. Valentine getting the credit for most of them. Another fight has been completely stopped with this rock solid defense that the Who is bringing. So two, uh, one minute, 50 seconds left on the clock. You can probably get at least two more good team fights here, but, you know, are you happy with what you're doing, or are we going to put it all into this Graviton bomb combo? Well, it's going to be interesting to see what they can do with that. Their big objective is going to be taking out the enemy Reinhardt. Mac is going to have to try to stay alive as much as he can just to try to help mitigate what that combo can do. Looks like Cashier is going to make it so they don't need too many more kills. He got two himself, making a third one, taking out Mac. Uh, but Del Sereno staying in the fight here, getting two kills of his own, trying to answer back with the defense here. This might be enough, and it's not going to be enough. Fox 6 coming in, getting the kill, and now it's cleanup duty. So point A has been taken here. This is exactly what Horizon uh, Zenith needed. They needed to get into this fight. They had unfortunately lost a lot of time they still have five minutes though that is a lot of time to take point b here let's talk about uh what allowed them to get into that fight Fo uh fofi was just trying to ult almost had that beat on but got picked just before he was able to get it off graviton surge is going to be coming in here but a counter shatter comes out from mac it might be enough no cashier was already in the air with that meteor strike getting a 2k in the back line rest of the kills are going to be coming in here so this is a snowball straight on to point b 50 percent uh 57 percent already capped here and look at all these kills what a fast very very smart play coming out for the side of horizon zenith but the stall is going to be coming in strong and they can't even get to the point because of that body block what a great job taking the advantage from point a and immediately capturing point b an excellent use of as you said of their bodies that body block just can be so oppressive especially since you are running that triple tank lineup and with uh, having more people on the cart, the, the respawn times of that defending side just becomes that much longer, allowing that attacking side to get even more of an advantage, even though they don't have the spawn advantage, but amazing snowball that they were able to build up and capitalize on. Well, Zenith needed at least the one point. So once they had gotten that, they were at least... They were at least able to relax a little bit, know that they could stay in the fight. But, you know, getting that second point and again, just showing their game sense, their skill, 
they just walked right in. They knew exactly what to do. They rolled onto that advantage, and it was just really, really fun to watch. Now what they really need is a full hold on point A, and that is asking a lot against a team like who, who has been just, I mean incredibly strong with the things that they choose to do whether they go with something basic or they go with something a little bit more exciting like that may thing they're just really really strong they're really well executed with their plans so it's going to be tough trying to stop who here when we know that they can do some interesting some interesting things on the attack yeah and especially with what's going on here they are electing to not have uh a main healer going with scope on to the Zenyatta. So they are electing to have more damage output on this uh, on this first defense. Oh no, no wait, that's the attack. They're electing for more on the attack. Yeah, just really taking their time. This is gonna be Horizon Zenith's fight to potentially lose. They need to engage at the right time here. If they go in and waste their cooldown buttons, their shift buttons, they're going to be sitting ducks, so it's really who makes the first mistake? It's going to be seeing who jumps in first. Yeah, just there. a little bit of love taps back and forth. Cashier is in the back trying to make some moves, and he does get out with his life, so I, could have been a potentially catastrophic play, but he does make it out. Cashier still on the prowl, but Scope finally getting the first kill. And Valentine already getting that high nude, able to give them so much space everyone has to hide because not they don't have a big shield of the reinhardt they have to rely on the bubble of winston and since it was already on cooldown uh they're able to just clean up after that well what horizon zenith they really needed to catch here to get a pick and unfortunately for him he you know went for the pick but got brigitte bashed there was nothing he could do so him being taken out of the fight for that short time you know, we saw how who capitalized and who's going to try to recreate the magic that we just saw. They're going straight to the top right, taking the fight right away, but it's going to be Cashier opening up with the first pick. Second kill coming in for the side of Cedra. They really need to hold this one, and it looks like they're throwing everything at this fight. And since they already have so many people down on the side of who, they're going to lick their wounds, go back to spawn, try to get another fight going on. They know they have a lot more ults coming on their side. That Zenyatta ult gonna keep them nice and healthy. Although, this is gonna be Jay Bright's time to shine if he can land a crucial anti-healing nade. Yeah, finally some breathing room, a little bit of time to think for Zenith. They can now, you know, now they're in a great position. You know, last time they almost got bum rushed, but this time they know exactly what they wanna do. So it's gonna be interesting to see, you know, how they walk in, cause they've been planning for this and it's gonna be Metaphor in the back line, getting the kill onto Scope, Cashier following up. So this looks like it's gonna be a completely lost fight here. Brigitte trying to make it work, finally getting taken out. Um, so again, Cedro was in that great position. They were already, they knew exactly where the enemy team was gonna go and what they were gonna do. So. Zenith had all the time in the world to plan for that, and it showed off. They didn't really invest too much there. They have four ultimates coming online, so... I mean, with Cashier doing all that damage, also building up his Doomfist ult, you can basically count him as having Meteor Strike right now. Exactly, but I kind of want to look at over at Valentine. With, on the uh, attack on point A, he was able to just build up that... Uh, but already getting taken down. Before yeah, the he fight can does come do in, but a fantastic anti-nade blocks a little bit of that healing. Beat is going to be invested here, so Horizon Zenith definitely trying to hold on to the point. Can they block who from getting any sort of percentage? Diva Bomb is going to be going in, not able to get any kills, though. Everybody's still staying alive here, trying to pull, prolong this fight. Does make it a little bit easier. Look at Zenith. They're getting the respawns. They're already back in the fight, and it looks like it's turning around, but Valentine not having any of that, getting two kills of his own. They may be able to get a tick. Yeah, and the armor coming out of Centro and a great EMP to just make sure no one can do anything and just allow them to try to hold on to this point that much more. But the stall may have been too strong. Look at this. Not even a tick has been gotten after that fight on the side of who? They just need to get a little bit more time on this point, but the respawns are coming in. Yeah, the, the kills are coming in as well, but there's always one person left on this point who's able to stall it out. And as they continue to weave in and out, Kashir actually switching over to the soldier, making sure he can get guaranteed damage. Uh, great pick just to hold, have uh, some point presence. They're, 
Now the Diva Bomb coming in as well, trying to get some kills. And look at this. How about that? Not a tick was to be taken for the side of who. That is very frustrating. There is always just one more defender left alive, keeping the point hot. And just at a certain point, those respawns start to come in. There's really nothing you can do. So what was that? About two minutes wasted on that fight. We still have about three and a half left. And there's a lot of ultimates coming in on the attack here. And we see Valentine switching over to the Doomfist off of the McCree. Perhaps he'll be able to see, find a bit more uh, success with that this time. Metaphor is trying to stay in the back lane, get some kills, but he has been taken out by the counter punch. All of the kills now looking like they're going just for the attack, but could we see another moment here? Look at this, still not a tick has been taken and they're still stalling out on the point. This could be another two CP. This is not gonna feel good. You've invested a lot into this fight. Yeah, but don't take out who just yet. They are getting some kills on the kill counter as they're, but they are being prolonged quite a bit. If they are not able to get something going in their favor, especially with a two CP map like this, they're not gonna find too much uh, success on their assault. And it looks but like they were able to get a tick. Ladies and gentlemen, they did get one going for two. Can they make it three years? Anybody gonna be able to touch finally being able to make it out, but it's almost the entire team of Zenith coming out on the defense right now. Can they get any kills? Gonna try to do it with that Diva Bomb getting a little bit of value, taking out Max. So it looks like the kills are starting to come in for the side of Zenith and they really need to prolong this fight, get some more respawns in. And continuing on, Box 6, the only, the last man standing, he's trying to hold on as long as he can. There is only one portion of that tick and they're finally able to get it. Who is going into over, over extra rounds with Zenith and they're going to be seeing who on the first side of the attack having a minute and 48 left compared to Zenith's four minutes and 19 seconds. That is brutally crushing to have a fight take that long. I mean, give credit where credit's due. Zenith looked so smart. They were able to stay alive on point. They switched a few heroes, trying to get that consistent damage in, just try to get some survivability, and it worked out. They wasted about four minutes, so... It's, it's going to be another moment where, you know, who can just walk in, win that first fight, and just roll that into the, the second fight, into point B. But if we see Zenith stop them here, this could be very difficult for a second fight. I mean, 148 is not that much time, so it's going to be really tough. If they lose this first fight on attack, if who loses this first fight, it's going to be very difficult for them. And especially if we see a similar strategy being used on the side of who... It still takes quite a bit of time for them to get to the position that they want. So maybe if they can, if uh, Zenith can find that right time to just cut them off as they make their approach uh, to try to get that high ground from the point, uh, maybe that is where their victory condition is. All right, so who just coming out, trying to get a little bit of vision on what they're looking to go. But at the moment that hack comes in, they had to walk in. All of who was in the fight, getting taken out one by one. And it's going to be a very quick win for the side of Horizon Zenith on the defense here. Just like we said before, you know, yeah, that was only one fight, but there's only a minute 20 left. And you know the enemy team is a little bit higher up in their ultimate economy than you. So maybe this is the last real even fight that they're going to get if they have to take another fight after this it's going to be almost impossible for who yeah and zenith knowing what they want to do as a team knowing that they have to jump before they're even able to get that high ground seeing if they can get a part in a great job on metaphor getting that pick off onto both valentine and mac yeah, picking great times to go in. It does look like it's cleanup duty for the side of Horizon Zenith, but Scope is still trying to pop off. Uh, he and his Diva, though, are up top. I don't know if anybody knows they're up here, but we've got a little bit of a separation group forming up top here. Three members of who are up here just trying to get a little bit of peck damage in. Is this going to be enough to start the fight? Uh, maybe, but it actually could be the extra breath of life that who needs. With that EMP coming out of her zenith, though, to try to uh, answer to it. 
Cashier back in there again, getting another kill, using the Meteor Strike, misses out, and finally taken out by Valentine, but it looks like the kills are now going in the way of Zenith. We may get a full point hold, and it looks like that boob is going to come out, taking Sola out. Arrow finally getting uh, that baby diva out of the fight. A little bit of life is left. It looks like two members are going to make it back on a point, but... I didn't think much was going to happen, but Mac opening up with a kill. They want to make this fight happen, and it looks like it just might do that. They woke the monkey, and the monkey is here to play. He sacrificed himself so that they can get at least this last bit of overtime. Hopefully, can continue on with this fight. Hammond also getting picked up just to get that point present to make sure that that is one less person or one more person that they have to deal with if they want to get this full hold. And Valentine is on point. He's stalling it out. He he dies, but then Mac is back, but then Mac gets booped out, and that's finally going to end the defense there. What a tremendous attempt that came out from who. It looked like there was a little bit of life left. DPS got a few picks, but unfortunately, the defense got more than that, and in the overtime, respawns weren't coming out. But, man, it, it really looked like Zenith had a little bit of a problem on their hands for a minute. Yeah, and we're seeing also a similar uh, response from Kashir switching off the Doomfist over onto the Soldier, finding uh, a very good place for what Soldier can do, just to sprint to the point, get the, that, uh, just to try to do what you can, and get some guaranteed damage, especially as uh, the big old tanks, just to try to say and keep the overtime ticker running. Uh, is you're able to just build up that visor so fast and especially with just the, the mechanical aim coming out of these players. You're going to be hitting a lot of heads. And yet we may see Metaphor come out on the Widow. I mean, I'd love to see that. You know, you open up with one or two picks here. You've basically won the entire game. So there, there's that option. They may go with something that's a little bit more reliant on long healing over time. Bring some tanks in, bring the Ana in, you know, kind of slow down this fight. Take all that four minutes that you have left. Um, so that's an option too, but I really expect to see just <laughs> Zena trying to open up with a quick pick and win it right here. Yeah, and all they have to do is win a one team fight. And as we see the Sombras uh, kind of saying hello to each other and in, in the visible in the invisibility. Uh, Metaphor doing a little bit of scouting just to see what they have and then adjust to what they need. Uh, great gameplay, great macro gameplay right there. Yeah, immediately switching it up. You've seen it all day. It's the triple triple comp coming out for Horizon Zenith. So they want a long fight. They want to take it straight to point. It looks like they're ready to go in right now. Yeah, jumping down. They're going to be playing to what they know best, and that is that beefy brawl lineup. Uh, it's going to be very hard for Mac on that Winston to just be able to go 1v1 against it. Not enough HP at the moment. Horizon Zenith is starting to lose key members of their squad here. So it could be a full defense. There's still a Brigitte alive. So, you know, don't count anything out yet. But they may be trying to just respawn together, take this next fight. Oh, but the EMP was used there. Not sure if it was needed, but it looks like some of the kills are coming in for the side of the defense. So it could be enough. Cedro is going to be taken out here. Yeah, Antide taken out by Valentine. So the defense finally does limp across here, but just as I say that, offense is back on it. It's the Zenith back into the fight. j -Ray getting the two kills there. Valentine trying to keep it alive, but that might be it. Look at this. We only, have, we only need one tick here, and we almost have it. And Scope doing such a great job to keep his team alive, but unfortunately gets taken down as a box six, using the bomb just to try to create some space. Siege are getting a lot of value out of that tank ultimate. The Graviton Surge is going to be following it up, and that's going to be all she wrote. Horizon Zenith staying alive in the tournament, taking the win there. This is a best of three. They just pushed, pushed it to the third map. So we're going up with our essentially our finals against these two teams uh, to see who gets to stay alive in this tournament. The next loser of this next map is out. And Cedro shutting his stuff getting saved by the Nano and the Beat to be able to continue to swing away and already having some smooth moves uh, dodging out of the way of the Shatter from the from Mac on that Reinhardt. Yeah, that was the moment that Zenith needed. They pushed it to the third game. 
they might be able to get the fight back into their favor, or I should say the you know, this match back into their favor. They've got a little bit of tempo going into this last one. They do feel confident. They're looking good. Really, really strong defense there. So it's going to be up to them. Not sure what the next map is, but it's going to be up to them to just kind of ride this wave into this next map. Again, who we've seen be completely deadly, but sometimes if you get the best of them, there's just no fallback plan for them. They just get stomped over. But the moment Horizon Zenith makes that mistake, who is going to walk all over them? So it's really, really tough position. But I think Horizon uh, Zenith is has at least a little bit of an advantage having just one. Yeah, and, and although they have the choice of uh, which map they want to go to next, even with that advantage of the one, uh, they're going to be picking Busan, so going to be an interesting choice. Uh, some very, very, very maps in, uh, in what Busan can offer. Yeah, I don't, I don't know too much, Utek. When you look at Busan, you haven't seen it too much. I mean, people have experimented with it, you know, obviously in preparation for the things like this, but you don't really play it too much if, when you're on ladders. So I don't really know if these teams have anything that's really, really strong, really solid that they've, you know, practiced over time, really have perfected, or if, you know, most teams might be coming in with more of a, well, we think this will work and it might work, but, you know, not having that nailed down practice, if the other team's played this map maybe 10, 15 times more than you, I'd, I'd have to say that's such a huge advantage for a new map. Yeah, exactly. And especially with Busan, uh, you, the one the one map that always uh, always seems to puzzle me is the hangar portion of the of Busan. Uh, especially since it it looks like it should be a short range map, but with all the space you can use in that hangar, uh, definitely a favorite of a Widowmaker trying to get uh, some pick. Um, I and it's I you'd wanna you'd think that maybe a Farrah could be utilized in that, but with what there's not too much uh to hide in terms of verticality it's very very open in the sky so maybe we'll see another may pick out of who uh considering they were able to get a lot of value out of it but since that was part of a initial strategy that they came with up with for dorado uh maybe they're we're gonna just see more three three coming out of both teams I mean, I'm sure both of these teams have something up their sleeve that we haven't seen yet. They may go to it or they might just go back to something they're comfortable with. But again, on Busan, it, you know, this is a really, really recent map. So if they haven't practiced many things, it might not work out for them. So this will be interesting. I think this might be one of the first times we're getting a chance to see a high level team like this in a tournament play on Busan. Let's see what they came up with. And as we go into the hangar, seeing those two point two uh panels on the point in the middle uh can go up or down and really swing a fight when you think you are safe behind some line of sight uh all of a sudden those things go down and it's uh it's open season for whoever has their sights on you yeah i think those are a little bit too cute for people to try to use them but a lot of times you do get caught out and that's <laughs> certainly doesn't feel good uh but maybe you know who knows maybe we've got some teams who have planned around that Probably not, but I would think, you know, now's the time to show it off. But let's see what both of these guys are thinking. Uh, looking over at who, we've seen DeSereno on the Brigitte. That's pretty fair to assume we're going to see uh, DeSereno stay on that. But Valentine onto the Wrecking Ball, that'll be interesting. And it's immediately switched over to the Zarya, which obviously makes a lot more sense. So we're going to see Goats. Yeah, Goats coming out of both sides. And who electing to have the Moira over uh, Zenith, who are electing to have the Anna. So, uh little bit of differences uh that anti-nade versus the uh aoe healing coming out and they're just going to be having a slugfest right up front yeah zenith wanted to take the fight to the bottom trying to get the uh, who who are dropping in uh, from the tube it looks like it may have worked out but the first d mecking might be going on the side of zenith yeah box six finally taken out the hammer but it does come in this early in the fight but you can see how much damage is being done Mac cleaning that one up for his team, and it's going to be a point cap coming in for the side of who. Just look at how much damage he is already putting out. Uh, it already has 40% after he already got his shatter so fast, just almost even halfway there now. And Cedro uh, off of Zenith hasn't even been able to get his shatter once. 
And that Moira ult is going to be coming in. Coalescent just clearing the way for the team. And what a fantastic block there by Mac. Getting that shatter stopped. Is Mac trying to keep his team alive? He may pay for it with his life. Almost got another shatter. But it's not going to matter. Siege are just hitting uh, W and left mouse button. Taking out the entire team. Clearing a pathway. And just like that, the tides turn for Zenith. Getting control of the point at about 40%. And doing a good job, uh, Fofei on the Lucio, just trying to hold on, get as men much percentage points as they can, going up to 42. Uh, just that much advantage. They know they have the ability to regroup fairly fast, but uh, as, as that happens, Zenith are going to meet them at the choke. It looks like the tank is going to be grabbed there. Lucio is in there as well, using his beat. A hammer down comes in, but a... Big brain bomb by Box stopped anybody from pushing it off that hammer strike. What a fantastic tank play, and it's going to be rewarded by the rest of the team, rest of Zenith, walking in, getting those kills. And if it wasn't for that D.Va bomb uh, by Box 6 back when they got shattered by Mac, that fight would have been over. This would have been who in control of the point. Yeah, and definitely within those alt fights, you're seeing a fireworks display of alt usage. And it, it's just like a rapid machine gun going every time, but it sometimes feels like whoever gets the last one wins these fights. And the dive does go on to Jay Bright, but he has so much HP, he does not even care. Staying alive is the Ana for Horizon Zenith. Somebody's got to touch a point here, though. They might lose it in transition, but staying on the point is Horizon Zenith, trying to keep everybody alive. It may not be enough, because that nano was huge, but it didn't pay off. All of the kills now, and again, we're seeing this with these long, drawn-out team fights. It takes a long time for somebody to die, but the moment it starts swinging just a little bit, you know, Horizon Zenith got wiped off the map. Yeah, and we're, they were able to uh, take the point a little earlier than I'm sure Arrow on the side of Zenith was hoping for, hoping to try to just stall out and give them that much more percentage on the, in this map. Uh, we're going to see another crash, especially with the ults uh, and prevalent. Earth Chatter is going to get a lot of value. That anti nade comes in for the side of Jaybright, keeping everybody anti while Box 6 follows up with that incredible Graviton Diva Bomb combo. I mean, that was just, that was brutal. That was brutal to watch. Uh, there was really no chance for who to survive. Uh, definitely a great bo that bomb coming out of Box 6. And look at this. The, uh, who is coming out going straight for it and taking uh, taking Zenith a little bit by surprise. Well, this worked well for them last time. Just goes straight to the point, force the enemy team to come there, and it's going to be Arrow coming in with a clutch beat, keeping his team alive. Hammer is going to come in from Zedro, also getting the nano boost. Is that going to be enough this time? And it looks like it just might be, but Mac is going to be the first Reinhardt on that kill feed, taking out Box 6. Somebody's got to follow up on these kills. Now we've got an even playing field. Mac taking down another Lucio barrier is dropped. And the ultimates coming out of the supports on the side of who going to be keeping the entire team uh, nice and healthy. But Sola getting team Mac taken out of the car and Desin uh, Desreno also being taken out. I, I am blown away by Jay Bright's ability to keep everybody alive in that. So many just fat anti-nades into the enemy team. But in those clutch last few moments, I saw a grenade come out from Jay Bright that literally hit all other five members of his team. He kept everybody alive through all of that nonsense. And especially with the team compositions that are coming out of with that triple triple tank, triple support, uh, playing that Anna, it's, it's like having no one is there to contest you really because you're so focused on that frontline fight. And we may be seeing something very similar come back into the next point, but now we see Metaphor in a very familiar sight. We love seeing this Metaphor opening up. Uh, if you remember in the first matchup today with just several Widow picks, it felt like every minute he was popping off. So now we get a chance to see it again, and let's see if there's any sort of counter pick. Does it look like it for the side, uh, <laughs> except for that sleep dart taken out of the fight for a moment as metaphor? Uh, but there's really nothing to counter this Widow right now. Except for Scope, who's able to out, out snipe the Widowmaker with the Ana. They say Ana was a better sniper, and it's it's being shown to be that right now. Scope 
staying on the point, trying to keep it alive. And it looks like the rest of his team is going to be able to avenge his death. Finally get control of the point there. Uh, but now it's a nice reset moment. You know, Horizon, uh, Zenith, they are a point ahead. Um, they can take their time on this fight. You know, really just... They're not really in any sort of rush. Because even if they drop this map, they're fine going into the next map. But with that already, Metaphor able to get the man advantage for Zenith. As they're going to continue on, Valentine getting taken down as well. And if they're able to play this well with that man advantage, they should be able to get uh, get the follow up and get this point. Scope able to stay alive long enough to get a kill on to Cashier, hit the nano boost, and again, may have just given his team this point on a silver platter. The Ana play that's coming out from, you know, we saw last round Jay Bright's Ana. Scope on this Ana is just incredible to watch. Yeah, doing a fantastic job of both helping and uh, just dealing out the damage. And with those, those sleep darts coming in, getting so much of value, getting a full eight seconds off those sleep darts. It's going to be Dalsarino in the back, taking out Bach before he could remack, getting another kill onto Arrow. Dalsarino has been left alive for some time here, but so is Cashier returning the favor, getting Fofe out of the fight. Cashier giving Mac that long walk back to the fight. So this is looking very, very comfortably uh, in the hands of Horizon Zenith. Um, yeah, now Metaphor is back in the fight as well. It's very, very tough to walk into this. And Dalsarino getting taken out but being a huge threat on the side of who, having stayed alive for so long, just getting so much value out of that Doomfist. And of course, Metaphor just closing the door on that fight with three headshots, not a big deal. Just all you have to do if you want to win the game, uh, click the heads. But already 91% on the side of who they are. All they have to do is win a one team fight convincingly. And that was a they very should have early beat that came out. Let's see if it pays off for him here. Dos is going to make it worth their while following it up uh, with Buffet's beat, getting two kills. But Metaphor completely alone on the high ground is just free to do whatever he likes. And Kashir doing a lot of work, but getting taken down. Unable to follow up, but Sola gonna join in on that ride on that bullet train and gonna try to go in for another fight with the point being held by Zenith. Yeah, Zenith still has a few more team fights to win, and really it's just come down to can you stop Metaphor? Valentine's trying to get into a good position, but not waiting at all is Dosserino Do not known to wait, just going and getting kills. It's already two down. Both of the supports taken down for Horizon Zenith. So, you know, getting that pick on the Fofe late into the fight didn't really do them much good. Uh, everybody is now on the point looking like it's going to be going over to Who. It's just a little bit more contestation. Can they get any more time on the point? There might be time for one more fight after this, but it's only 91%. 91% is very hard to fight back from, especially on this. Maybe they can get back to it. But Disarino doing a great job taking out Metaphor, one of the big threats that Zenith has. But they're going to be able to keep a man advantage on the point as Kashir going to be getting another more picks. They as never the gave fist. up control of the point there. That never went back over to who? That was Zenith in control of the point the entire time. They had 20% of completely contested free point grab. Then their DPS gets back in. Cashier pops off incredibly with that Doomfist at the end. That was the stall of all stalls is what we just saw with what Zenith brought to that fight. Even then in the play of the game, we see just the chaos that can happen in these 3-3 uh, three, three comps. And, and through the lens of the Reinhardt, you're just trying to swing at what you can. I can't believe this tall that we just saw by Horizon Zenith. They were fighting. They knew they had that point uh, stalled out long enough to have their DPS come back in. But, I mean, we've been seeing that all night. These teams have been able to keep these fights alive way longer than they should go. And then it starts turning in their favor. 
it's just been an absolute treat to watch. But, you know, unfortunately, it does mean that who is being uh, kicked out of the tournament here, that's their second loss. It is double elimination. But we do have Horizon Zenith moving on in the loser's bracket. They still have this extra life. They are going to be continuing on uh, to the next round. I mean, Utech, what do you think their chances are? Uh, after seeing this game, uh, they definitely can show that they have a lot of potential with what they can bring. Uh, metaphor on that Widow just getting headshot after headshot after headshot. And let's not forget the other sniper, uh, Jay Bright, playing all that all that uh, Ana, just making sure that everyone on the team or on the on the front line stays alive is just amazing to see what the power of an Ana can bring to a team fight. And also, I I want to give a big shout out to uh, Box Six that uh, uh you know you're you're playing Diva, you're dealing you're dealing a lot of damage and you're soaking up so much, taking away some crucial shots from the enemy team and also just landing a lot of bombs that helps sway the team fight into your uh into your favor and i'm excited to see who they're up against next and uh i hope uh i'm i'm excited to see what what they do in the upcoming rounds yeah, I, I can't wait to see it, but we are going to take a quick break. We have another bracket that is finishing up right now. Uh, they're going to be coming in for our next loser's bracket. It's going to be loser's bracket round two. Both of these teams coming in have lost one, still fighting for their lives. We got one more match to bring to you here on Horizon Overwatch. And then, of course, remember later, we are kicking it over to our good friends at Broadcast gg they're going to be hosting the rest of this tournament both today and tomorrow so very excited to see, uh, bring this to you uh, and we will be back in just a few minutes
All right. Welcome back, everybody. We are back live here on Horizon Overwatch Twitch. Uh, and we are hosting if the N NFN uh, Community Invitational. So now that we're into the uh, Not For Normies Community Invitational, three rounds deep, we're into the losers round. And wouldn't you know it, the saga continues. It's Zenith back on your screens this time they're looking to fight for their life once again but against hybrid esports hybrid esports has been incredibly dominant i don't know tell us a little bit about hybrid uh utech of course uh coming out of hybrid we're going to be seeing young savage and bajer on that tank line it'll be very tanky as well as uh yankee wolf hero on the dps uh gonna be seeing a lot of great plays coming out of them and then Squid, KD, and Nobody Cares on that supporting line. And taking a look over Zenith, you know who it is. It's Cedro, J. Bright, Metaphor, Cashier, uh, Cashier, Box, Six, and Arrow back at it again. Taking out in the first round, they just uh, stomped through who in their last round. It's up to Hybrid Esports to stop them, and it looks like it's going to be Li Zhang Tower coming in uh, as the pick from the Overwatch draft. They uh, ended up on Li Zhang. So that's going to be the first map uh, between these teams. And a guaranteed winner coming out of it. Uh, going to take a pause. Going to give us a little bit of time to uh, go a little bit into detail of what we might see out of these uh, out of these teams coming compositional-wise. Uh, of course, we know that Horizon Zenith has been going through the gauntlet, and they've been doing so well on the 3-3 comp set. We've seen a lot of these teams love and favor uh, as we know what happens next. Uh, we are seeing, um, at least we know with uh, Horizon Zenith from the previous games, uh, going to be looking at Metaphor, who has uh, had a lot of success on the Widowmaker. And it looks like we are going back to Lobby just for a moment. Of course, want to make sure that all the rule sets are in line uh, and that's exactly what anxiety is checking. So we'll be doing that for just a moment here. Thinking back to what we saw coming out from Zenith, uh, again, we didn't see hybrid esports yet, but thinking back to what we saw from Zenith, um, they did really seem to get a little bit of, you know, momentum going behind them. Maybe that's going to help them out against hybrid. Um, but again, I've been hearing just <laughs> from, you know, players like Badger and Squ Squid Kid, like, you kidding me? They're going to be coming in and getting kills. The, the whole thing, hybrid esports roster is so strong that even with zenith having this little bit of momentum advantage hybrid esports is just such a tough team yes yeah, it's, it's gonna be interesting to see what they're gonna be pulling out if they can uh pull out that 3-3 uh push it even further than what zenith can do and gonna be looking at the dps lineup yankee wolf and hero uh i hope hero is my hero as uh, I want to see what he can pull out and what he can do. Well, pretty much based on what we've seen so far, Utech, I think it's going to be maybe some triple-triple coming out on at least one of these sides, possibly two. I mean, there is a lot of cool stuff you can do at control point. You don't always have to go white, through, uh, white room with your team. A lot of teams will elect to just bring it straight to point, you know, take over point and force the enemy team to come down the stairs into you. So there are a few different options. Symmetra has been used on some of those options if you take it straight to the point. Uh, but Squid Kid uh, might, <laughs> might be trying to just bait us here. You know, these these players, they like to have some fun. They like to clown around a little bit. But that even though they like to have their fun, that in no way takes away from the action that they are very serious and their desire to win this tournament and looks like we are going to actually see a uh a normal team got but actually hero and yankee wolf electing to go on the doomfist and may and it looks like both teams do want to bring it straight into white room here a uh, very familiar site they're going to be just jockeying for position but nobody expected that maywall to come out for the side of hybrid esports locking in the main tank uh, Cedra was able to take out, uh, was able to be taken out by Monster. That Maywall was perfectly timed. The placement just locked everybody off. They've clearly come up uh, to this point with maybe four. Hybrid Esports is looking very, very confident. 
Yeah, and as we know, the strength of that 3-3 lineup is to try to get everybody into that brawl, make that space for and give you the advantage of uh, being able to focus one person out. And then you see another wall coming in, but unable to t get anybody out. <laughs> and how about, you know, this May pick has just enabled so many fun options. We saw that back on Dorado, not even the same team running it, but now Hybrid Esports has elected to run it. Uh, this is just a blast to watch how they're able to just completely cut off team. Look at all of these entryways. Eventually you have to come through and somebody's going to get ice walled off. Exactly. And Yankee Wolf doing a great job. Look at that. Already the Reinhardt getting taken down. And just <laughs> the Red Smith team does break through the wall just to try to get back to him. But unfortunately, Cedro was taken out long before getting pushed back. And it does not look like Zenith has an answer for this uh, defense that's coming out from hybrid. Yeah, it, it's it sort of looks like silence of yeah. No wait, no. Uh, well, I'll get I'll get my horror movie references later. But these the May is just doing so well. Silence of the Wolf. I think I got you. It's not going to matter with Monster walking in with the big shatter. The Graviton there is there as well. Even the Maywall to block up the healing. Hybrid Esports is just so perfectly calculated with the way they're taking these engagements. Even with all these ultimates that are going to be coming in from Zenith, I don't know that it's going to be enough to just dismantle this defense. And four, four ults coming out of Zenith. They're going to be popping that armor. Trying to get everybody in. Arrow gonna have gonna have what he can. And a Maywall, which is blocking out so much damage off the side and allowing Hybrid to stay alive. Cedro is gonna use his Earth Shatter there. Not a ton of value, but the rest of his team is able to follow up on it. Get those kills finally. Monster does have a parting shot to say, but eventually the point finally ticking over to the side of Horizon Zenith. And it's 99% though. Uh, on hybrid esports side, so they really only need to win, win one fight, and it looks like they want to take it right now. Yeah, and we've seen Zenith in this situation before, and we know that they can be very persevering in these long fights of in their fight to ninety nine or two hundred percent. Yeah, Monster is feeling very emboldened. He's got that nano boost behind him. It does come in. The Earth Shadow is going to be coming down, taking out. Zarya, who had basically infinite HP, finally taken out there. And the hybrid esports on the back of the Rhine on a combo, uh, able to stay alive and take this fight. And that might be the fifth or sixth wall that we've seen coming out from Yankee Wolf, which is just perfectly placed, keeping the team alive or trapping somebody. This may has been crucial to the win. Yeah, and just doing a great job because with this 3-3, a lot of the damage is being focused on into that Reinhardt and a oh, great shatter, but still those Maywall is able to take out the charging Reinhardt, even though he may not be pressing ship, he is bloodthirsty to try to swing away at whatever is in his line of sight. And how about this? Not only did Zenith break through that wall, they kept bringing the damage in after investing so much into their into this last fight, and it is paying off. But Yankee Wolf trying to keep it alive here. Graviton Surge is going to be thrown out by Badger just before he dies. Is anybody there to follow up? It doesn't look like an arrow getting the only kill. And it looks like Zenith is doing fantastic. They're able to keep on with these kills, able to just keep the fight going. And they're going to be getting ults coming on in as they're still a full six man. As they're going to get back points counting on to their side. 62-63. Uh, and they're going to try to shove out Hybrid into their spawn. What? What a great back and forth coming out from that team. And Horizon Zenith just keeps clawing away. They're still in this fight. It's 75% capture now. Hybrid Esports back where they want to be. The Maywall is coming out. Is it going to be enough? And it's all the kills coming in fantastically for Horizon Zenith. There was nothing to do for the side of Hybrid to stop that onslaught. You got a chance for maybe one more fight, but somebody's going to have to move fast. Yeah, seeing Hero switching over to the Hammond. Going to try to get a cheeky touch just to try to get into overtime. Maybe if they can keep the fight going on into that choke point, they can get the fight. But Metaphor sees them in the background. 
His overtime is still going here. Monster trying to go as big as possible. He did not get any value with his shift. Just whizzes by a few targets, and that's all that Horizon Zenith needed to get the better of this fight. Finally, the kills are coming in. A little bit more rapid pace, getting them off the point. It's going to happen. It has to happen, and it has happened. Horizon Zenith taking that 99% to zero all the way up to a victory for themselves. I think this is the power of that Zenith can utilize. They Once they are able to get that point, they're able to hold on to it so much. Not only are do they, they just stay alive in the fights, they are able to play to their strength. And that is perseverance throughout everything. No matter what, if there is a team fight, even if you take down maybe one or two, they're still able to keep the rest of the team alive. And you have to give them more credit where credit is due is going from zero to 99 percent off of uh off of hybrids uh 99 already all they had to do was win one fight now getting out into the main uh pillar area here it's gonna be dive v dive but j bright getting the best of that right click taking out nobody cares that's a zenyana dead this early in the fight trance is not gonna be built you're not gonna have a ton of damage with you so yeah hybrid esports is very quickly falling back and I like seeing this McCree pick. They know that Dive is favored in this uh, in this map right here. So if you have that McCree, you have the Brigette, uh, you can just do a lot of be very and be very oppressive to anybody that just tries to jump into the back line. And just immediately after seeing what was coming out for the side of Horizon, uh, Zenith. Hybrid Esports went goats. They're going straight to the point, trying to take the fight here. It may work out for them, but they do need to get a little bit of a better position. It's going to be Monster pushing up. It may be too far. Very low health, but his healers are keeping him up. Nobody cares for staying alive for as long as possible. Finally, a kill comes in, and they start coming in. The healing was so much on the side uh, of uh, Zenith, or I'm sorry, of Hybrid. They were in the right place at the right time. Their healers were working. They just couldn't get those kills, and it turned out to be a lost fight in the end. Yeah, and on top of that, we see the alt economy out of Zenith looking so strong for them. Box 6 also already being 85% to his bomb. That self-destruct going to be very important as they continue on. The GOATS lineup coming out of Hybrid, though. They do have Squid Kid with, with the... Uh, with the beat so that's gonna keep them that much healthier as they continue on with this brawl lineup oh and already getting knocked out by by cedro doing a fantastic job cedro getting another boob kill that was such a good position for hybrid esports to walk in and get the better of that fight they had tank ultimates on their side but nobody was expecting cedro to walk through and get a 2k with the primal completely shutting down the fight and that's that's just amazing how much just one single primal rage can sway a fight. And they already have they have J Bright, they have Arrow, and they have Box Six with their ults respectively. They're gonna be able to hold on to this fight for fairly a long time. Graviton Surge is gonna be coming out here. Hybrid Esports on the points using as many ultimates as they have available, but it was the transcendence that came out from J Bright to keep everybody alive throughout. No kills have been gotten for the side of uh, Hybrid Esports, and this is gonna be final fight, potentially final fight of this entire map if they can't turn it around. Yeah, Metaphor with on that McCree trying to pop the high noon, but unable to get anyone as he's not able to load up the time for the Deadeye. And this hybrid are able to clean up after the single pick off of off of metaphor and maybe we're gonna see a uh, a bit of a reverse sweep on uh the side of hybrid and see uh show zenith that hey we can we can do the same thing you guys can do yeah that was the fight that hybrid needed they finally made it out on top they have a little bit to work with with the double tank ultimate um but man take a look around coming around this corner it's gonna be zenith looking to get some kills in but the giant shatter comes out from monster taking everybody down with him boobs are coming out from squid kd that's gonna be all she wrote yeah and oh just just that timing of the boop when that grab was done making sure that nobody could just keep fighting in that and only having to use uh two ultimates out of that really 
Yeah, they're going to be relying a lot on Badger's Diva Bomb, and nobody cares getting a Coalescence here. Uh, they don't have too much uh, outside of that. Squid Katie does have the beat available, but, you know, watching this team just walk in like this, it might not be enough. Finally, Warrior Coalescence, and the beat is going to be coming down. Stacking their support ultimates together might not work out in the end, and it looks like it is going to be going into the wave, but wait, Monster turns around and gets a shatter. All in the middle of it, Monster trying to make it work. It's not gonna happen. Finally coming through is Zenith getting the better of that fight. Man, that was a spooky one starting off with Nobody Cares uh, using that Coalescence. I thought it was gonna be a, a lost fight at that point. Yeah, but let's look at Squid KD already able to get, so, get back to the point so fast as well as switching on over to the Hammond. Monster doing what he can to at least get maybe a little bit of hope onto this, but Zenith able to just strut their stuff as they're going to be able to win a Li Zhang Tower. Zenith is just almost inspirational to watch at this point. You know, they did get taken out early on by Discount Avengers, but watching how they've responded in every single one of these maps since, this is just incredible to watch. And then, of course, we can't forget about this May defense that came out from Hybrid Esports. It worked so well for so long, but, you know, the moment they lost the point there, walking in with the May was a little bit tougher. But as a defense, man, they looked almost impenetrable. Yeah, it's... And as, as it happened... They had to use so many ults on the side of Zenith just to break through that May defense. And especially just with the effectiveness of May, we're, we're seeing a lot of these teams able to pull out some very good defenses. I think May is a lot more of a, a defensive hero than uh, offensive as we've seen. But still, if you can hold on to that point and you can just be so oppressive to whoever you're going up against. Yeah, we're going to see if, you know, that comes yeah, up right. in the next map. The map is being selected uh, right now, or I'm sorry, it is being switched over right now. And it looks like we may be going back to Hanamura. Yeah, we will be going back to Hanamura. Uh, and it's going to be very interesting to see uh, what's going to happen. Of course, uh, we saw Zenith go on there with that uh, triple, triple tank, triple support. But uh, Hybrid Esports showing that they have some variety in their lineup that they're willing to try some new things and you know what i'm i'm really really hoping to see something a uh, little bit more interesting than just uh, straight goats comp coming out of uh, hybrid it's interesting if you do it well I, th I think that's the difference and we've seen a few teams do it uh pretty well uh definitely a lot to learn from uh keep in mind you are watching the not for normies community invitational number two this is going to be the last round of the night Tomorrow, it will be picked up again with the final rounds over on Broadcast GG. Make sure you have them followed. Uh, make sure you have us followed. Uh, that way you can get updates every single time we're going live. Uh, and as a reminder, this, not only is this the last uh, round of the night, this is the last potentially map of the night. If Zenith comes up with a win here on Hanamura, this is it. You know, Hybrid Esports is out. And we've seen Zenith do so well before on on Hanamura, being able to snowball after point A, just uh, charging the castle and making sure that uh, their approach comes in for that victory and giving them that extra time they needed if they go into extra rounds. And it's it's going to be very interesting to see here coming out of the defense from Hybrid, going to be running a soldier off the top uh, of very beginning. And uh going to be very interesting. You are able to get that high ground on top of the Mega um, Mega House. Um, so we're going to see what they elect to do with that soldier positioning. Yeah, I, I like Hero on the soldier. I really like seeing Yankee Wolf on the Sombra. There's going to be a lot reliant on her staying alive, getting good information for the rest of the team, and getting awesome key hacks. Yeah, and I love what Metaphor is doing here. He just goes in, scouts, see sees what they run. They, give, they already have... Uh, enough time they have four minutes what's 20 seconds when they know where people are and how to uh how to fight it 
Yeah, and just immediately going goats, going through the right side. We've seen Zenith run this play before, and it worked out very well for them last time. Uh, the moment they get to that window, they really like pushing aggressively to the point. It looks like that's going to be happening right now. Everybody's just trying to stay away from them, waiting for the moment. And it's going to be Zenith walking all the way through, just trying to confirm these kills on the back. Does pay off. Nobody cares getting taken out immediately. Yeah, and a great job with this rush down. Monster on that Winston playing a game of catch up as he was not able to be in that front line with his team. And just textbook play there by Horizon Zenith, you know, not only having the, the forethought to run the Sombra, just to get a little bit of information, switching over to the GOATs, running it like that. I mean, again, they couldn't have run it better. And they're rewarded with six minutes and 40 seconds left to attack point B. We saw them just roll into point B last time. And it looks like once again, they're just playing by the playbook. Yeah, and all they have to do is just keep this fight going. But an EMP already coming out of Yankee Wolf. Yeah, Yankee Wolf did uh, build that EMP relatively fast after losing that first fight, and it's paying off to finally stall out this fight. It's going to be a lost fight, so there's going to be no snowball moving into point B here. Still plenty of time to work with uh, is Horizon Zenith. And forget about the Widow v. Widow duel. We had an Ana v. Ana duel. Nobody cares. And Jay Bright. Uh, farming up their ultimates with a little bit of damage here and there and they're the ultimate fights are it, it's gonna be uh we're gonna see a fireworks display right here well at least there's no emp <laughs> but it, it might not matter with everything else that hybrid is bringing to the table on this one they do get high ground to zenith they're just waiting for their time taking it straight to point they know where they want the fight to be uh, and it looks like it's going to be a little delayed coming out for the side of hybrid they don't want to take this fight unless they know they can win yeah and jay bright trying to save box six with that nano nano boost but unable to keep alive already getting taken out of the mech but it doesn't really matter as they're going to keep this fight going uh continue to but uh, Hybrid is still stalling it out. And Hero is able to stay alive. 10 HP finally taken out. But again, so smart coming out uh, for the side of Hybrid. You know, giving up one or two ticks doesn't really matter in the end if you know you can hold the point. So the first pick comes out. Hybrid Esports, they just give a little bit of room on point. Winston goes and uses his primal to, you know, prolong the fight a little bit more and then the rest of the team comes in and crushes i love that play from hybrid esports and they're planning to hold it at two ticks for the rest of the match and not only that monster is doing a just a fantastic job doing kind of a, a counter dive with that winston get it, taking away the space that jay bright wants on that on, on that high ground just to be able to heal and making sure that the rest of the team can just freely keep fighting and try to stall it out just for that much longer as we head into the four minute mark. And yeah, just waiting to take this fight. There's really no rush for the side of Horizon Zenith. Uh, they're just essentially waiting for a mistake, but it's gonna be the EMP that opens up first, followed up by the beat by Arrow after the EMP, making sure it stays on his teammates and Metaphor is gonna give him a return on his, on his investment with that pick. Finally, some more kills are coming in. Look at that 3k for Metaphor, and that's all they need. Oh no, the transcendence from Squid KD was so close. Uh, but it's going to be Metaphor getting those last few kills in the final tick. And a great job on them having 3 minutes and 48 seconds left if they are not able to get a solid and full defense coming out of them. Uh, see if uh, they can pull off some cheeky strats. Uh, Metaphor on that Sombra, Kashir showing his muscles with the Doom Fist. And of course, we have uh, Box 6 going back onto the Diva, running uh, that dive, that dive uh, defense, and then just keeping everybody alive. You know, Doom Fist on these defenses has just been doing so much work for whoever runs it. Yeah, and we've seen maps where Kashir, uh, Kashir started with the Doom Fist pick. Other maps where, you know, it was a lost fight, had to get back to the fight quickly, so pick Doomfist to get there, um, and then winds up getting three kills the moment he gets out. So we've seen this Doomfist do a lot of work. I don't know that we've seen Hybrid have to deal with the Doomfist like Kashir, so, 
you know, this could very easily catch them off guard. Of course, Hybrid does have the advantage of going back into spawn if they do want to, you know, switch anything up. Um, but man, dealing with Kashir on this defensive Doomfist, if you don't make a decision fast, he's just going to use all, build another one in about 30 seconds, and there's going to be no chance to, to walk in. Exactly. And, you know, just with the amount, as you said, with the amount of alt charge that a Doomfist can potentially rack up so fast, you know, you can essentially just do what you need to do, use your cooldowns, and then use your ultimate just to escape. That That is how fast you can get it. Everybody just taking a look at each other, trying to see where the target is. And smartly getting out as Kashir didn't get the pick, but he did get out with his life. Both teams just kind of tapping at each other, trying to see when's going to be the best moment to get in. And it's going to be high ground coming in for hybrid esports. Uh, but it looks like their four supports in the back line are getting taken out. And it shows the power of Doomfist and what he can do to an open back line. Uh, great job by Kashir. Definitely thinking that there was some uh, some wins moving in favor of Hybrid. They had three people on on uh, box six on that D.Va, and they just were not able to take down the D.Va fast enough. And it's going to be the Winston Cedro going in very early on that fight. The rest of the team is there to follow up. It's going to be Cashier getting the Meteor Strike kill. Cedro following it up. Squid KD is able to finally take out the Doomfist. It's not going to be enough, though. The rest of the team uh, looks like they're trapped in a corner. But <laughs> watch out. You put Yankee Wolf out into a corner. He's going to pop off like that. Uh, but in the end, it didn't even matter. And it's going to be another full hold defense for Horizon Zenith. Yeah, definitely trying to find what their approach is going to be going in for that dive, but their Zenith is holding on to that choke so well, especially since uh, they're able to just be brutal. And look at that, Cedro taking out Squid KD, who is hiding in the back line. Uh, or wasn't he? What? And it looks like Metaphor does want to get into a good position for this EMP. Trying to stop this fight before it even starts. Just waiting for the enemy team to group up together. This may be close enough. It looks like it's going to be the EMP coming into the back line. Finally taken out is Monster. The hack follow-up. Metaphor is just keeping them permanently. Crowd control does make it out with his life. But Cedro gonna going to be in the spawn room. And a nano boost coming on to... Box six to keep him alive as he is the one tank that needs to stay alive in this continued fight. Yes, yeah, Squid KD throwing the beat there, following up with a kill, and then we have another beat coming in this time from Arrow trying to keep the fight alive. Another kill comes in for the side of uh, the attacking team. This is Nobody Cares just opening up with that kill. And yeah, it looks like it might be time to give it up. Zenith does not seem like they're going to be trying to take back this point. So finally, with a minute left on the clock, it is Hybrid Esports coming in, getting uh, capture point A. They're going to get a little bit more time to capture point B, but it doesn't look like they have too much in way of ultimate usage to walk in. Both teams really only sporting that primal. Yeah, and we'll probably try to do a dry push just to see if they can knock out any ultimates on the back burner on the side of zenith uh four and a half minutes left on the clock there still at a slight advantage if they can uh, win uh, this first round of fights monster is going to be opening up with that primal trying to clear out some space but it's cashier in the back line taking out nobody cares diva bomb is going to be invested here no value to be gotten hybrid esports looking like they still want to take this fight here but it does not seem like they can get any progress finally taken out as monster hybrid was in a great position there but just overwhelmed at the end of the day on the side of zenith so it's going to be a full hold here uh, and it's going to be another about a minute off the clock yeah, gonna be taking their time as they're gonna try to hold on maybe metaphor can sneak in oh but gets taken out himself before he can try to be take out nobody cares on that zenyatta trying to stagger them just that much longer
Yeah, the death there doesn't really matter too much, unfortunately, for hybrid esports walking in. Uh, at this point, the Sombra is able to get her respawn back. Um, but I'm sure it felt good to take out Metaphor in that position. And now Metaphor firing back with the EMP. It's going to be Cashier getting as much value as possible, completely unimpeded, walking into the enemy team, finally taken out, but not before doing a ton of damage. Yeah, and Arrow already getting those follow-up kills, making sure that he gets those last slivers. Doing a fantastic job on this Lucio, allowing his team to just continue to follow up as Yankee Wolf and Bajer are trying to just regroup with their team. Hopefully they can maybe uh, regroup uh, three minutes left on the clock. Well, as, three uh, minutes and six ultimates <laughs> left on the clock, and Hero has already used that Brigitte's ultimate the fight is coming in right now. It's a little bit tough for Yankee Wolf to get into a good position, but let's see how he tries to use this high noon. And the Nano Boost already used on Cashier to make sure that he stays alive as they want to end this fight very shortly. They know what else they wanted to use, and they got their desired result. Yeah, and that wasn't so much a case of uh, running a dry run there. It, it was really just <laughs> Zenith having this just fearless defense walking into the enemy team you know having cashier net uh cashier nano boosted i'm sure did a lot of work as well um but again still in a good position is hybrid they can walk in they do have five ultimates online well, though they have all those ultimates they're going to be using them all as much as they can and we're going to be seeing everyone pressing their q button as we go on into this prolonged fight yeah, this is going to be a lengthy fight. You know, having it contested on point is all Zenith is really looking to do right now. They're trying to just extend out this fight, waste as much time as possible. Um, but it looks like in the meantime, they're just winning the fight. So <laughs> I, I almost want to say unlucky. You kind of want these fights to last a little bit longer. And Cedar trying to jump in, trying to stop at least one tick. But Hybrid was able to get at least one tick. A minute and 20 seconds left on the clock for them. They have 36%, but they're going to have to see if they can get at least two more pieces of that pie to try to stay in this tournament. So they are fighting for their lives. And Badger dying there, I mean, that was pretty late. That late death just cost him about 20 more seconds, which doesn't sound like a lot. But when you only have a minute 20 left, that 20 seconds feels like a lifetime. And especially with how long these fights are lasting, just look at that 50 seconds left there. This is going to be the last last fight, at least last prolonged fight. And the ult advantage is heavily in favor of Zenith. Yeah, switching up the attack with that Genji uh, might work out for them, but it looks like all the damage coming in on the side of Hybrid Esports, they are able to get some value, but they just can't live long enough. And once again, Zenith just walks in on this defense. They don't wait, they haven't waited once for Hybrid Esports to make the first move. The moment Hybrid is in any sort of position where they're even remotely committed, it's just Zenith walking into them. We see Hero going on that tracer, seeing if maybe he can get uh, get a touch. But Arrow is going to try to boop him away. Unable to get it. Going to be able to get them into overtime. And that hack was incredibly timed. Monster trying to drop his shield on the bomb. Got hacked. Wasn't able to. And a very familiar sight with all the kills looking like they're going in the way of the defense. Horizon Zenith has clinched Hanamura and their future life in the tournament. Uh, what a fantastic show. I mean, that defense was, <laughs> I mean, the stall was just insane, but how they were able to just keep tempo over the fight the entire time, that was and, really, really just fun to watch. And we have to look at it right here. This is the reason why they were able to hold on so convincingly each time. Every time, uh, hybrid tried to attack at that one spot they were able to just snuff them out in that choke point utilizing the effectiveness of doomfist and making sure that nothing can get past that singular entrance you tech have you ever been hit with a nano boosted meteor strike from a doomfist you know for the games that i play i don't think there's that enough coordination to get that uh get that going and all I know is that if I was on the receiving end of that, I'd 